Hello everyone, uh, this is Dr. Navi here. In this video, I'm going to uh, explain you about like how sample pooling is going to work for real-time PCR to test SARS-CoV-2. So, all what you should know is I'm going to tell you in here now, like how this sample pooling test works and what is the principle and what should be done like after one uh, sample shows positive or negative as per the, uh, the ICMR guideline and uh, before going into that here it is very very important that like um, uh, this this should be done like if you are very much aware that the som sample has been collected properly so that is very very important if one of the sample is improperly collected sometime while extracting the RNA there won't be like uh, really a good number of viruses and then you're gonna pull it again you're gonna dilute it right so in that case here one very important point is that when you're going for a pool sampling, please make sure that your sample collection is really proper. Okay, so that is very, very important. In that case, you can really go for it. And there are some uh, recommendations by ICMR. I'll come to that later. So why we should go for sample pooling? What is the reason for it? And imagine that like in a, in a world like many population is affected. And in India, there's a huge population is there like if you want to screen the uh, entire population is really difficult it is impossible i would say so in this case what we can do is by doing the sample pooling test we can really achieve that so instead of doing a five individual test you can do one test and that your five individual results are ready now so imagine that 100 uh, patients are there like you have to do 100 individually right but in case of sample pooling you have to do only 20 because five uh, in each, so 20. So in that case, by doing 20, you can reveal the uh, under uh, individual results. Look at the cost, cost dramatically reduced. Why? Because imagine that one sample, 1000 rupees. And if you do five samples, 5000 rupees. In case of pooling, you're reducing five into one so that you can reduce 4000 rupees per test. I mean, uh, the entire five, five uh, individuals look at the manpower reduction so when you want to screen the large population you need a high manpower required for like either technicians scientists physicians you need a high manpower in that case pooling will really reduce the required manpower in this case and time race time is remarkably reduced here usually when you want to extract the uh, sample and do the real-time pcr I'm, I'm just going to tell you like one reaction it takes hardly mm, uh, around like four four hours roughly like three to four hours so by doing the sample pooling method you can really reduce the time as well so this really gonna help us in some way okay coming to how does it works the pooling how does it works I'm gonna explain in a very simple manner imagine that in a population five people are there you want to test them whether they are infected with SARS-CoV or not uh, in that case we are not sure that either two, bad, two might be infected or one might be infected or sometimes worst cases all the five might be infected right so instead of going individual testing we'll do the pooling of five and based on the results we want to go and test whether the patient is positive individual patient is positive or not so that's how it works so in this case we reduce the time and really pick up the real positive method and this is really recommended by ICMR and it is which was like validated by uh, ICMR VRDL laboratory at King's George Medical University at Lucknow. This is very important and this I'm going to show you like how it's really work uh, in a laboratory. So the first criteria is please pool more than two samples. There is no point in pooling two samples because you will be reducing only half of it right. There is no use it like we have to pool more than two samples. And please remember, you should not pull more than five samples. This is very, very important here. Why? Because when you pull more than five samples, you are really diluting the viral load and you are going beyond the limit of reduction of a real-time PCR. Any test have a real limit of reductions. Um, and so not only real-time PCR, any, any, any test like ELISA or whatever it is. So we want to avoid that because we want to make our test as stringent as possible. So what WHO... Uh, recommended ICMR recommended is that you have to pool more than two sample but not exceeding five okay that is a criteria and imagine that here like I am taking an example the first row on the top five samples we are pooling again the down we are doing a file sample pooling usually you take one ml for pooling right 
I mean, I sorry, uh, you take one ml uh, for RNA extraction, usually. So, uh, as per the recommended uh, protocol of our RNA extraction, right? So here, what we are doing, we are going to do this exactly same, but you are going to take 200 microliters from each and pull them together and finally to mix one ml and you extract the RNA of it. Similarly, the down, down rows, you pull them 200 microliters each and extract the RNA. So, when you are doing the real time PCR and one turns out to be negative, how how you say that the pool is negative that's there is a rule like if there is no curve in the sars cov target genes it could be either n gene or e gene or rdrp gene you have a variety of tests like my, my lab and altona or like uh, labgen so etc et so many kits are there like so you have to be very sure which gene is you're using so based on that if the target genes are negative and human rna p that is con internal control is showing a very good curve. In that case, you can really consider the pool is negative. And in case of uh, individual test, in case of other 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 criteria, positive, when you can say positive is that, there is a curve in the um, target genes, E gene or RDRP gene or N gene. At the same time, you should also have the curve in the RNAs P, right? Here, one important thing I want to tell you is that, this is critical here. Imagine that a five sample is here and one sample RNA was not extracted properly or there is some inhibitor but still the patient may be positive. In this case, we are not clearly can say that RNA-SP of that individual is worked or not. So that is a risk here, right? So that's why ICMR came out with some hypothesis how it should be tested. I will tell you that in detail. So you understood, right? So why we are using RNSP is that mainly to cross check whether what we extracted is worked properly or not. In this case, when we pull it, might be the RNSP from some other patient can show positive, but the someone who is really virus positive, may the RNA is not extracted properly or they have some inhibitors which may not come out properly. That you cannot clearly discriminate it. That is a problem here. Okay, so so if this curve is positive in target gene as well as RDA, RNA-SP, then it's positive. Then you have to do do the deconvoluted testing, which means that you have to separate all the five samples uh, and do the test. Okay, so you have to now do the individual test and see which is which one is positive. In this case, like two is positive, the remaining are negative. So in this way, really you can reduce your workload, cost, and time as well. So this is to put it very simply. Uh, in a model like you you imagine there is an hundred samples okay so if you want to screen really hundred samples you will go for individually hundred sample right that makes really uh, cumbersome so what we can do is uh, by using this criteria hundred samples five each totally you have to do only 20 reactions and if you do 20 reactions in case if two turned out to be positive in that case you have to multiply two into five so totally you have to do 10 reaction again in this case, totally 10 reactions you have to do follow up after the 20 reactions, right? And then you have to interpret the results which individual is really infected. So you see that the bottom table which clearly explains that in a normal method, now what we're currently doing is 100 and 100 reactions we will be doing, 100 samples, 100 reaction, And time, two days it may take. And cost, as per like I said earlier, like 1000 rupees, 1 lakh it will be. So it's a huge cost. And in case of pool method, it's really interesting. You take 100 samples, so first we'll pull 20, 20 uh, reactions and it may take only 6 to 8 hours roughly and uh, your cost wise you see like only in the 20,000 whereas the follow up method like you have to do it depends on the how many samples shown positive either it could be 5 or 10 so based on that the cost uh, is only 30,000 here in the, with this example so this way you can really achieve a lot like you are reducing uh, 70,000 rupees now and time as well okay this can be done in uh, two methods like uh, pool before extraction and after extraction but i generally if i were in this position like i would really prefer to do the pool before extraction uh, why because like uh, this really works like 200 microliter each and due to the extraction all the uh, rna is going to adhere into the uh, cartridge that is the column you, you use the column, right? The column as a silica, so which attached to the RNA. 
so you're really concentrating the RNA there and then you can go for real time PCR. Whereas in case of pool after extraction, you're going to individually extract the samples, right? And then uh, say for example, you are going to elute it uh, differently. So that is what like here it is matter. So when you elute it differently, you may elute 30, 30, 30 microliter and then take 10, 10 microliter, you pool there. Whereas in this case, before pool before extraction, you elute at one shot. So totally it's going to be a 20 microliter or 15 microliter or 30 microliter. From that you can go for it. So both of them have equal advantage and disadvantage and it based on your preference, you can take which one you want to do it. So this shows like how positive works and you pull them and then it shows positive uh, curve in any one of the target genes and then you have to go for uh, in, um, uh, individual ones and then show which one is positive, right? And this shows a negative one, like negative, no curve in anything but curve in uh, internal control and then you can say negative. This is very important here because like this is the criteria and recommendation given by ICMR how to screen the uh, pool sample. So first one is like the pool test can be used as a routine test in area where the COVID-19 is positivity is less than 2%. So please remember if there is an area where there's a less than 2% COVID-19 positivity, you can go for normal routine testing, also a pool sampling. Whereas in case of area where there's a 2 to 5% uh, prevalence of COVID-19, then you have to use only for the community surveillance as well as the asymptomatic screening, and not for the one who have a close contact with infected individuals or healthcare workers because they are more uh, prone to expose to the COVID uh, infected patients. So then they have to be uh, tested individually. And in case of uh, areas where there is more than 5% or 5% uh, positivity, there it is not recommended generally okay so this is a criteria by using this you can do the pool testing and i hope this will be helpful for um, um, uh, scientists and technicians and physicians who are involved in the diagnosis and i'll be keep posting some of the videos which will be uh, i hope it will be useful thank you so much